<laughs> Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is leading off right here for you every single day, Monday through Friday on Fantasy Pros MLB channel on YouTube live with the Peanuts and Cracker Jackson brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sportsbook. And with me, of course, is the Welsh who is uh, gimmicking the broadcast already with uh, a copy of the Fantasy Black Book, it appears, which he's hiding behind. One can only hope that when he reveals it, it won't be the Welsh. Perhaps it will be Byron Buxton instead. So will we get the birthday boy or will we get the Welsh? Welsh? Buxton? Who is it today? Ah, it's so interesting. I was just uh, reading one of my favorite pieces of literature for fantasy baseball (laughs) preseason stuff. Something I like to do, Joe, is I occasionally will... uh, take a look in season and I just happened to go to uh, the Byron Buxton page on the fantasy black book. And I, and I, I found a, found a mistake in the fantasy black book, Joe. And uh, yeah. the mistake yeah. is you didn't have me write the Byron Buxton uh, player profile, which should have been done. I did write strategy in there. You did, but I don't see the uh, Welsh on the Byron Bucks Buxton. One, one? Was that, is that the strategy Buxton one, one? Is that what you're, yeah. you're pissed off about this morning? I'm just saying. I don't see me <laughs> writing the Byron Buxton. That's a huge mistake. You want to know where Byron Buxton was in here? Under solid options. Now, to give credit, our friend Tuma definitely is a Byron Buxton stand. But we yeah. are not going under solid options for Byron Buxton, my friend. We are going under elite RPV options. No big deal. <laughs> Just a pretty good week for Byron Buxton. I know the Peanuts hey, and Cracker are. Jacks are probably very excited for what my take would be on Byron Buxton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but look, man, hey, you got to ride the wave while it's here. It's a good bit, number one. And number two, he looked great. And number three, uh, you got to enjoy it before he gets hurt again, as always, because we always know that's always impending and looming at all oh, times. But man. today, we're going to get through some headlines, the stat heroes, the stat zeros, a little DFS, a little wagering, because we do it all here on uh, leading off on MLB channel on Fantasy Pros. And let's start here with a little bit of history. My boy, Miggy, Miguel Cabrera gets his 3,000th hit. So congrats Phenomenal. to him. Did you see Welsh? He's got basically the same amount of hits as his entire Tigers teammates combined. I thought that was amazing for their career. I, buy, their career. I, I buy that. I totally buy that. <laughs> yeah. Miggy's yeah. the best. You know what's crazy about Miggy, too? I don't know about you, Joe. But, like, Miggy came in right at like a really critical time of me caring about baseball obviously you care like when you're younger and stuff mm-hmm. but as like you mature and you become well kind of mature uh, as you know you become say, older mature, not it, really like that older, mature yeah, yeah. That's probably as you get older yeah. and like you start to like you know really follow players and really get like mickey was in that really critical marlins time where that you know that team yeah. that came up was like juan pierre and craig council was such a great team well, he josh was exciting beckett. it was a very exciting josh team. beckett the yankees in oh yeah. uh, three right it was great And he came up in that and it was like kind of special because it's one of those like, you know, like 20 year old kids and stuff aren't going to have like a perspective for it. But when you see guys through their major league debut to their retirement, when they're in hall of fame, it's something that like, you know, our dads and grandfathers and everything experience in baseball that we're getting to really truly experience these guys that we watch from day one to, you know, breaking all the records to hall of fame ceremonies. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Mickey deserves it, it. He's incredible. It was a beautiful moment, too. Uh, and his first hit was a home run. His 1,000th hit was a home run. His 2,000th hit was a home run. Fortunately, now the 3,000th hit was a home run. But again, that would have been all the kudos game. to Miggy. I don't even know what kudos, all, kudos are. I never understand what that means. But I want to give them all to are Miggy. Are they cousins of kudos? I know. I just love I might be. But I love, that, I love that Miggy has been such a great hitter for such a long period of time. And then there was a few years recently where it felt like things were just going in a bad direction. And he's kind of found yeah. himself a little bit lately, too, which is great. I mean, you wanted him to finish his career strong. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Again, who oh, the moron yeah. is, and you know there's going to be a couple of them who don't vote for Miguel Cabrera for the Hall of Fame. Send him to my house so I can slap him around. Do you uh, really think minutes. there will be? Do you really think there will be? Like, there was I somebody the, who didn't vote for Derek Jeter. I know, but the Jeter thing. What? What's I don't the, know. What, what about Jeter's career doesn't say Hall of Famer? What? I, no, I agree. Three thousand hits, a million listen, championships, captain of the Yankees, played in one spot his entire career. I mean, what what more did that guy have? To I, do? I, I guess I agree with it. I guess I agree with it because there's always that debate of like you know offense, da da da. I don't know. I I agree with what you're All saying. He has three thousand hits. <laughs> it's just how can anybody do? Like, what is going to be the argument on Miguel Cabrera? I it can't even facilitate what it would be there is going to be somebody that doesn't vote for Miguel Cabrera. There's going to be somebody because we never get unanimous guys. We've got one unanimous guy ever. Yeah, and Mariano. it was, a, and of all people, a it reliever. was a guy who, it was a reliever of, yeah. all, I mean, that is such a slap in the face to the guys who play nine innings. I can't, I am, 
I am didn't even think I was in a good mood. Now I'm salty about this because I know it's going to happen. So I'm going to have to wait for five years after Miguel Cabrera's retirement to get all pissy about it. But I, I can get pissy in the I'm meantime about it. Eloy Jimenez out for six to eight weeks with a hamstring injury. Oh, my yeah. goodness, boy. I saw it live. It was going on, too. I happened to be watching a cut in there, and I saw it. And I went, oh, boy. That's a hamstring. That's going to be a long period of time. So you know all the bucks and stuff that we get. Eloy is yeah. he's like floating in that exact same territory <sighs> without the uh, the crazy upside. You know, offensively for like stolen bases and whatnot. But it's an elite bat that cannot stay healthy. DH or outfield. I don't know if it matters. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you do. I mean, right. he's a big body Almost guy right. that can't keep it. I think. I think it just. I think it's just a bad stretch of luck. And and honestly. If somebody's frustrated with him in a keeper league dynasty format, go get him right now. This is your chance because last year they that. waited for five months to him for getting for him to get back. And now you're going to have to wait another two months probably to get him back. People get frustrated and people hate to lose. And he's too young of a player. I would go get him. I mean, Anthony Rendon was hurt a ton in his career before he had like four or five glorious seasons in this prime. So, yeah. I mean, guys can shake this off. Byron Buxton can shake it off still. There's still time. Uh, who else is shaking it off? Uh, Ty France is shaking off a lot. He's shaking off a lot of balls off his bat. He is on fire right now. He's been great. Uh, John Means, unfortunately, uh, also things not going his way. Wow, wow. He's going to be out for the year with Tommy John. This was a pitcher. I have zero shares of Welsh. I don't know how you felt about Means, but I was staying away from him because last year, the injury and the sticky stuff uh, all to me was just like a little bit. I mean, his run was too good to be true. And then it all kind of fell apart in the second half, and I just wasn't buying in. Do you have any shares of uh, no. of John Means? It's ba okay. Baltimore pitcher. I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not. I mean, you mean John the best Means is half fun. ERA in baseball, Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, John John like John Means is fun. They brought back the fences, all work in his his favor. Yeah. But like, it's Baltimore pitcher. So no, I don't. yeah. Uh, Eric Lauer, holy crap! Thirteen holy strikeouts for him. Yeah. How about that? Uh, and of course, Byron Buxton. Seventh uh, homers of the seventh and the tenth to lead the Twins' uh, longest walk-off home run in the Statcast era. Oh. By the way, four hundred and sixty-nine mm. feet. Did you know that? Well, tell me more. You know what? I did because I was immediately tweeted about it. It might be my favorite <laughs> bit. You know what? Good or bad? Good or bad? My favorite bit might be Byron Buxton this year. Whether he goes down injured and all of you tweet me, or he's amazing. And then like some of you that want to play on the positive side, not all of you. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of, I saw someone in the chat immediately was like, oh, it took one minute for Byron Buxton to be brought up. Plenty of you don't want to play. That's fine. But the Peanuts Cracker Jacks that want to play and have fun on it, I love those tweets as well. Yeah, so I will take this them is off. supposed to be a fun. We're making baseball fun because it used to be fun and we want it to be fun. And if you're enjoying this video, then make sure you like it. And of course, if you're watching us live, go comment because here's one from Eric Clance. Mm -hmm. I've been getting, this is the third Kyle Tucker question I've got today. Yeah. Eric Clancy wants to know trade away Suzuki and Chris Bassett to get Kyle Tucker. Uh, I take that right. Uh, I would say yes to Eric's question here. I love Kyle Tucker. I still think he's a very good player as good of a pitcher as Bassett is. And he's very good. If you've got the pitching depth to give up, I still worry about Suzuki in the next five months, way more than I worry about Kyle Tucker's slow start. That's me. What do you say? Here, yeah, that's a fair point. Like, I don't know. I agree with what you're saying with Suzuki. Like he's going to come back down to earth. But some of the things he's doing create sustainability throughout the season. Like he's not swinging through pitches. He, you know, he's taking the balls. He's swinging at the strikes. He's making good contact. He's running a decent amount. The thing is, though, is Kyle Tucker is exponential, say a Suzuki. So mm -hmm. if you if you believe Kyle Tucker is washed, then you don't make this trade. But if you believe Kyle Tucker can regain form, which I think we all do, yeah, I mean that's that's a that trade makes sense. It really does. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually got one too this morning that the uh, the gentleman sent Carlos Carrasco and Cody Bellinger for Kyle Tucker, which I'm also all for. I mean, you you would definitely do that trade too. Uh, as, as good as Carrasco has been, and he's been very good. Uh, as good um, as Carrasco has been, as good as uh, Bellinger has been. Oh. Yeah, but you know the the hmm. I don't know. I like it's nice to see Bellinger bouncing hmm. back but there's still so much more potential for failure in there. So I would rather have Kyle Tucker. Kyle Tucker was so well, good yeah, last year. Yeah, I don't disagree. a bad that. April. People are freaking out about Kyle Tucker. Go, I'll take all your Kyle Tucker shares. Send them my way. A couple other news here uh, and notes. Jeremy Pena walks it off for the Astros in the 10th. Welsh's boy, boy, you were right on time with him. Jeremy Pena, yeah. uh, this is your day. It is your. It feels like your birthday today. With everything. <laughs> yeah, it was all Friday, but yeah. Nick Lodolo gets his uh, MLB first victory, struck out seven in that, so that's very good. I also traded him this weekend. I made a lot of trades this weekend in my home league. It was very fun. Uh, some injuries. Michael Conforto had season-ending, or should I say surgery, because he has yeah. no season. He wasn't on a team. I was going to say season-ending, but whatever. So he's going to miss all of 2022. 
for those of you who are drafting him and stashing him, it's time to drop him right now. Uh, I want to get to, can we talk about this? Because Kyle Schwarber got to basically embody all the frustrations oh. of every baseball fan for the last 20 years in one moment last night with Angel Hernandez, who called a ball outside the strike zone, a strike, which is, as John Heyman puts it in one of the many, many tweets about it, uh, he couldn't see the E on the eye chart, Angel Hernandez. That was uh, that was my favorite of all of these. But Angel Hernandez still has a job. And I kind of got it's to think about this, Welsh. And I wanted to ask you, sure. if we were as bad at our jobs as Angel Hernandez, would we still be employed? I think not. No, I, I, you know, it's funny that you brought this subject up of that, like not just focusing on how bad all the, co but like that he still has a job is incredible. And the ineptitude of baseball to allow the worst person, the worst public person at maybe right. the most important MLB job, not, you know, the players themselves, but an MLB based employee like that for this guy to be so known for how atrocious he is and to continue letting him be out there with what seems like maybe we don't know behind the scenes it seems like no repercussions it seems like is there ever a conversation a talking to well no, i don't know he gets mean. worse he's contentious on top of it on top of being bad he's contentious about it and yeah. i don't understand he why threw he schwarber out instantly like without has didn't even let schwarber have three seconds of frustration and anger he as soon as schwarber bat down gone and it's like give me a break dude yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I, I just I just don't understand. Like, just because a guy's an umpire, if he's proven to be the worst at it, why is he still a, like, I don't understand. There's consequences. People get fired. Unions are not. If you are bad at your job for 20 years, I don't understand how you could still send be him down to anything. AAA. Dude, legitimately, Angel <laughs> Hernandez is going to be the reason why Obo, Robo umps tank over. That's it. Like, why else? Why, why else would they do that unless these guys got so horrible he's the worst of all of them he's the pack leader of all of them he's the reason it's going to be we should call it the angel hernandez rule and but all that means is getting fire robots. him why do you think he doesn't face any discipline or, or problems because I, I guess my point is i understand that you know there's a protection thing in place and and every everybody's a human being and they make bad calls but when you're consistently doing it on a daily basis for question. years plural when do we stop that and when do we go hey wait a minute this guy really shouldn't be out there doing it Maybe pull him into the office instead and let him do something else. And let him be one of the guys who watches reviews of, of be a consultant. Like, be a consultant. Come on. You know what would be great? Television is so good now with bringing on villains. How about let him be the consultant that the you know Sunday Night Baseball comes on and said, "Hey, Angel, you think that's a strike?" And they're like, "He's like, yeah, sure." And they're like, "No, he threw it in the outfield." I think everything's like, a do strike. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bauer just threw that in the uh, outfield, Angel. <laughs> that's one of my favorite bits of old Chris Rock was a consultant. That's what white people say when they're unemployed. <laughs> That's one of my favorite <laughs> bits. I love that. All right, let's get to uh, stat heroes for the weekend. We said Eric Lauer with his 13 strikeouts, six innings, zero earned, outstanding Unreal. performance. Uh, six straight Ks at one point, lowered that ERA to 2.20. Kyle Wright continues to be amazing. Phenomenal. Well, I'm so pissed off about this. Can I just – can I vent for a second? Sure. Because I have been a Kyle Wright apologist for so long – and I've rostered him in so many dynasty keeper leagues and then lost faith and, and jettisoned him over the last year or two. And now he drops another 11 K performance, one walk, six Ks. I mean, six innings, excuse me, against the Marlins through three starts this year, 17 innings, 26 Ks. I mean, this is the Kyle Wright we've all been waiting for. What is different with Kyle Wright? People forget that he was also a top prospect. You know, it, yeah. it's amazing to forget. go back and look. Well, it's amazing to go back and look at like the group of guys that he made it out. It was like him and I think Mike Soroka, who's injured right now. You yeah. had Bryce Wilson, who God right. knows where he is right now. He was a big guy too, a bigger dude. I can't remember. Uh, Luis Gohara. Luis Gohara. Yeah, Gohara. Was, yeah, 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 who yeah. used to be a Mariner and he got traded over there and he failed. All of them failed except Max Fried. Max Fried was the only one that was able to come out on top. And Kyle Wright has just, Velo has been up. He's consistently been hitting his spots. That's the thing. It's consistency. That's the thing that is frustrating for so many about baseball, but then also as part of that love is you can have these guys and it's like the post 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 hype sleeper where the talent was always there not all of them does it click in six months sometimes it takes two or three years and we see it with hitters a lot pitchers there's a com i mean a commonality of these guys four or five years into their career changing a few things tweaking it have the experience knowing what to do in big situations and then just start going and it's that like you know that really late 28 29 year old that just starts going kyle wright found it he he had the pedigree before 
He's refound his consistency. And I'm with you. I tried to do a lot of pickup and buys in that first week. And he is, you know, he's no go for anybody right now because he was one yeah. of the biggest pickups to start the year. Let me say he's going to win people leagues. I'm telling you right now, he's this year's road on because when you get a guy who's free and is pitching like this, who's pitching like an ace, forget it, man. That's a league winning guy right now. Uh, also, hopefully a league winning guy, Garrett Cole, who found himself again. Thank goodness. Uh, nine K's over the Guardians there. No earned runs. Thank goodness. Garrett Cole looking like Garrett Cole. Giolito bouncing back to oh. getting back from his injury. Nine strikeouts of four innings. Thank you, Lucas Giolito. Welcome back. Uh, Aaron Nola finally looked good in the game against the Brewers. Nine K's in this one for him. No earned runs. But again, Aaron Nola can go out next week and give up six earned runs and four innings because he's Aaron Nola. Nestor Cortez, another guy, continues to dominate uh, the for the Yankees. Eight K's this weekend in the game for him. Also, Gomer had a good start with AKs. Frankie Montas, same thing, AKs. Hazel Cesardo was, was good. Walked four guys, but still got the AKs. Other strong performances this weekend. We had Gallon, Darvish, Kopech was good. We mentioned Lodolo getting his first win. Tariq Skubal, the guy I was talking about with Bogman, has been very solid as well. And Shane McClanahan. I love how fired up, by the way, the Peanuts and Cracker Jacks are today. I riled them up on this Angel Hernandez stuff. They are going crazy. If you're watching this back, I implore you go read some of these comments because they are We're, hilarious. What actually what we've done is we we really hit all the points. It's almost like it's like a textbook. We started with me poking at Buxton. We went then to is G, was Jeter a unanimous Hall of Famer to then Angel Hernandez. There's only two or three more areas we can go, Joe. Should we talk about the DH and the NL? And is I was it say, you want to talk about Pete Rose next? Where do yeah, yeah, let's say exactly. <laughs> Charlie Bay, by the way, I don't know if everybody saw, done a little Pete Rose marker. Charlie Blackman became the first player to be an endorser of a gambling site. He is like the face endorsement of a gambling site. He's the first player to get that done. So yeah, let's, let's talk about P Rose. Let's get a few more. I clicks just hope going. the tagline is always bet on Blackman. That's, Blackman. that's, yeah. that's what I would do. Black. All right. That's great let's one. go to the hitters. Ty France, eight for 15 over the weekend with two dingers, uh, seven RBI. Finally, Paul Goldschmidt picked things up too. He had been stone cold, but seven for 14. See how what happens. He jumped his head average from 146 to 236 just over the weekend. Michael Brantley heating up. We're going to talk about him later. Love him in DFS. Love him in the prop market tonight. He is red hot. Six for 12 with a home run. Uh, three walks. Byron Buxton, six for nine over the weekend. Three home runs. You know that. Nice. Mike Trout, six for 12. Two dingers. <clears throat> Mike Trout is leading the American League in slugging percentage at 690. Question for you, Welsh. Who is number two and three right behind Mike Trout? Don't look. No peeking. I'm not looking. Can you I'm name those guys. In the AL or in baseball? In the in baseball. In baseball. It's Trout. Two and, and then three. two and three. Think Buxton? about guys who in slugging percentage. It's not Buxton, okay. believe it or not. It's guys who have had obviously very hot starts. One of them is very easy. One's a National League. Actually, both are National League guys uh, that are right behind him. Um, so um, who would be player of the month in your mind right now in the National League? I'll give you a hint. He plays in the Central. God, I mean, Come on, my Peanuts brain... and Cracker Jacks. If you know the answer. You... Oh, Nolan Arenado? There. No one Aaron Otto is one. Okay. The Chad says Crone. That's a good guess. That is incorrect. Uh, you got another guess here? I could I could give you a hint. Yeah, give me another uh, hint. I got Aaron Otto. Uh, his play has been music to your ears. <laughs> music. Get it? Jazz. Yeah. Jazz oh, Chisholm. Oh, Jazz Chisholm. Oh, that, that was How actually about Jazz good. Chisholm? So obviously. Obviously, the guys we thought would be at the top of Sunday everyone. Uh, vote, look at the Suzuki bet. I mean, everybody thought it was Suzuki there. So those are great. Yeah. Bet. Those are really, really great yeah. guesses. That's that Mike Mayer gave me that little uh, tidbit this morning. We were talking about that. He quizzed me and I said CJ Crone and then Arenado and then I couldn't get Jazz Chisholm. Uh, so the mayor did something useful today. Good on him. Uh, oh, Cody no. Bellinger, three for 12, two more home runs for him. Hmm. So your buying window is probably closed. Jock Peterson had two home runs. Jazz Chisholm, four for 13, one home run, three steals. He's starting to look. I mean, Chisholm is one of these guys, very divisive so far. If you were Team Chisholm, you were doing very well. Um, not much else we could say about that. Jorge Mateo, two for 12, but he stole four bases too. Also, two home runs this weekend for Austin Riley, Mookie Betts, Santiago Espinal, uh, Aaron Judge, uh, Christian Walker, and Wander Franco. Wander Franco hitting for a lot of power here, Welsh. Yeah, hmm? I know. Yeah, was, Wander doing it, and he did it in of, the same game. A bit of power? Hmm? Yeah, just a bit. I love it. Is that I your love million it. dollars? Mm. It's, it's mm, well, mm. perhaps. No, Scotty. What, what, what? I can't do it with my voice it, right now. But He's got a lot of power. Yes, mm -hmm. so much power. Wonder. Really good at baseball. He's got a good lower half. I really like that. Uh, all right, here's some stat zeros. Oh, man. Remember when Patrick Corbin had a good couple of spring I starts? And we were all no. getting excited. <laughs> 
Don't you want me to finish podcast? Let's not talk about Patrick Corbin. Uh, uh, Why wow, you got some shares there, buddy? I, I just don't want to get a nerve. Patrick Corbin. Yeah, it's a little nerve. That's okay. Well, I'm gonna do it then. Seven earned runs, eleven twenty ERA through four starts. Sean Manaya, bad start for him. That's okay. Six earned runs. Don't worry about it. Everybody has a bad game. Eliezer Hernandez, unfortunately, he had a bad start too in the no decision. He had pitched very well up until there. So that's kind of frustrating. Uh, Corey Kluber, four earned runs for him, and Aaron Savali, six earned runs. And Alberto Mundesi, one for 11 with seven strikeouts. How about that? By low yeah. and Whit Merrifield, I did this weekend. Always. He's got three steals through 14 games. He's hitting a buck 36. Whit Merrifield is one of the best hitters in baseball. I don't know what's wrong. Don't worry about it. Jesus Sanchez starting to cool off a little bit. Two for 13, six strikeouts there. Bo Bichette, sluggish start to the season for him. He's a great buy low candidate. He's a much better player. He's got 20 strikeouts already and hitting 217. Jesse Winker's done nothing. He's two for 20. And uh, that was one guy I was concerned about. Wor- yeah, you were right about that so far. I mean, I yeah. still think so he far. will rebound. Uh, the guy's, you know, built to be a good contact hitter, but this is one that you were on and, you know, for all intents and purposes, you're right because, of, you know, you have this bad of a start. People are going to cut him or he's easily, yeah. easily trade, uh, trade accessible. I just felt like Cincinnati really propped up a lot of his numbers, you know, and that lineup too, the way it was structured, it was good for him. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Alvarez too, one for 13, three Ks. Uh, but look, you got Alvarez, you got Bichette, you got Whit Merrifield. Those are the guys I'm buying right now. Welsh to me, those are guys that should absolutely you know, people should be throwing offers all over the place. Uh, let's get to the home run board because wow. we've got a new leader and it is a little scary if you're a Game of Thrones fan. It's yeah. the Night King. Oh my goodness. The Night oh. King is up to seven. Look at that. It's glorious. Still got a bunch of people with six. Pete Alonzo let me down terribly. No home runs for me this weekend. Boo. Pete did Alonzo. I get, did I default get Byron Buxton for the weekend? You have to call, you have to at least put it in the sheet. If you're not going to call it in Discord, you have to at least put it in the sheet. Them's the rules. So just I'm pretty sure that was there. the last person that I did have on the sheet. I just want to point out. Well, I, I don't know. You have to talk to Mayor. Mayor is no, the no, keeper I'm just, of the I'm sheet. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just saying. I, you can take Byron Buxton for the whole season for all I care, like you said. And you yeah. want to play that game, we can play that game. Uh, if you want to play other games, though, go to BetMGM. You see what I did there? That's Special offer for new users. Bet $10 and win 200 when you bet on any game, regardless of the outcome. If you sign up today at BetMGM on the BetMGM app or at BetMGM.com, BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. And when you sign up, don't forget, use that promo code leading off. That's one word, leading off, not two. It's one word now at BetMGM. So go and get your props on. Here's some good ones. A little tough day for him, but I, yeah. I combed through with a fine comb Welsh. Shane Bieber, uh, K-prop over on DK, six and a half. I like the over on this one. Uh, the juice is uh, minus 150, but I would still pay it. Chris Taylor. Total bases on BetMGM is just 0.5. I think that's a smash there. Same with Trey Turner's total bases on DK, which is one and a half. Uh, I think that's a smash too. They've got good matchup against Kelly tonight against Arizona. And then Mark Cano, who's been quietly back for the Mets and actually hitting pretty well. This is a sneaky one, boys and girls. DK, 0.5 on the total basis. I like the over on that one. You get minus 160 again. The juice isn't great, but I would squeeze that. Any uh, Anything else there? You, the, catches your fancy there welsh you know one that i kind of like uh and it would actually be you don't want to parlay these two crazy but i kind of want to parlay kyle schwarber total bases which i believe is just said or hit it might be where the hell was it it was at hits it's on the prop sheet which i highly suggest uh suggest go check out the cheat sheet prop sheet which you guys can go and check out over on bettingpros.com and they've got a Kyle Schwarber marker at 150. And I, I believe it might be just hits at uh, 0.5. And parlay mm-hmm. that with Will Smith with the Dodgers at total bases, which is plus 125 one uh, up against Merle Kelly, who he hits pretty decent. And I would parlay oh. those two together. But yeah, I'm not, not the biggest fan of this uh, entire slate. Because also you have great hitters going up against really solid pitchers. Yeah, which that's I why it's a tough one. On. It's a tough one. And the pitcher, remember when, you know, a couple weeks ago when the pitcher K props were all over, they were all wrong. <laughs> well, they're not wrong anymore. So if anything, you might have to look for some of the unders. Maybe some of them are set a little high. Maybe not that Bieber one, though. Here. But um, no, not the Bieber one. The Bieber one's the one yeah. outlier for me. And speaking of the Dodgers, who we both seem to be in on, they're my stack of the night tonight. I like the Dodgers a lot. There's some value in the Dodgers, too, especially on FanDuel. Some really medium price Dodgers, which is odd. Uh, and uh, Houston is the other way I would go as well. The pitchers tonight, uh, look, if you're going to go big time, it's Corbin Burns, it's Max Scherzer tonight. Scherzer's 9.3 on DK. He's he's almost $1,000 less than Burns because he's going against the Cardinals. 
I would take that thousand savings and I would put it in the Scherzer. I'm, I'm not even hesitating there on DK. They're the same price. So you can mix and match if you want to tonight in cash is perfectly fine. If you want to have exposure to both a uh, Framber Valdez is 8.4 on DK 8.7 over on FanDuel. Here's the, the one strange outlier on DK Walker Bueller is just 8.8 against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Please hmm. just roster him. Don't overthink things. And Jose Barrios is super cheap tonight, too, on DK. I don't know. They got drunk last night. We're hanging out with somebody. I don't know what went on, uh, but that's what I'm looking at tonight. Uh, some of the lineup builders on DK you got McCutcheon at 3.3 at the top of the order against a lefty on DK. Uh, that's good value. Alec Bohm at 3.6. Marcana just 2.3 on DK. Marcana. He's the cheat code that allows you to get to those big pitchers tonight on DK. And then on FanDuel, Justin Turner, who is another buy low for me, professional hitter, slow start, whatever. He's He looks fantastic. He had a good spring, 3.1. Jeremy Pena, Welsh's guy at 2.9. Michael Brantley at 2.6. Start that stack with Houston with Pena and Brantley at the top of the order on FanDuel. And then go Kyle Tucker at 2.9. And then the Franimal at 2.6. Uh, those are some of the guys tonight. So, Welsh, you've had a lot of time to think about your home run call. Who mm. is your guy tonight? Who's going yard? Well, I'm going to go with the guy that I had just mentioned. A very good short career versus Merle Kelly going up against my Merle. Diamondbacks. I'm going with Will Smith. How apropos for your uh, joke from a little bit earlier about Chris Rock. I'm going to go with Will Smith, who is uh, six for 11 against Merle. Got a homer in there. Big bat. Merrill gives up some bombs, even though he's been pretty solid with the strikeout numbers. And, you know, he's a sneaky, cheap option. But I'm going to go with Will Smith against my Diamondbacks tonight. I am Keep going to go with... my pick out your mouth, though. Keep my pick out your mouth! <laughs> Keep my pick uh, out your mouth! Just please don't hit me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Freddie Freeman. I'm also going with a Dodger tonight against Merle. Everyone just is just, just piling up on poor Merle tonight. Yep. Uh, but give me Freddie Freeman, man. I got to get off the schneid. And look, at I see people talking trash. You know, I started slow last year in the home run contest, too. And then I, I was running the table for a while. So it's OK. I'm like the Mark Teixeira of the uh, slow start <laughs> of the home run contest. Remember, I have a big man. Teixeira would be terrible every April and you yeah. could buy him low like clockwork. I love that guy. He's the best. You could get 90 oh, percent of his stats in five months. Love that dude. Yeah, so good. Go. Uh, it looks like Mike Mayer is going with Hunter Renfro, who's been hot lately too. And oh. once again, now we're getting at the end of April. So if you want to make a home run call, you got to go join our discord fantasypros.com slash chat. That's the place to do it. You join the chat. And if you are a premium subscriber to our fantasy pros tools, which again, it's not expensive. If you're going to do football stuff too, you might as well just come over and join the cult and hang out with us. Cause we're fun. You get exposure to all the AMA channels where you can ask Welsh and myself direct questions. We're going to do stages and things like that. Yeah. Uh, there's a great group of people in here, too, just to find to replace people in leagues, to, to get trade ideas off of. It's a great community we have, and it's over on our Discord. And again, it's fancypros.com slash chat, and that's where the home run call lives, where you can go and make your home run calls every day. And uh, I tell you, we're going to give away fabulous prizes this year, which I'm very excited about, sweet. Welsh. Super excited. All right, so... Uh, before we close things out today, this was a this was a whiz bang jam packed kind of show, boy. I, it was. I feel like I'd go another couple of rounds. Uh, any final thoughts here, Welsh? That uh, on your mind that you want to share with me or the uh, rest of the peanuts and cracker jacks watching? Not a ton on my mind. You know, just been one thing <laughs> as of recent. Just looking at that stuff. But no, I mean, I will say this: we are closely getting into, and we are going to have to start talking about when victory lap season does begin because i think everybody okay. has Ooh, wrongfully good. jokes aside with i don't know if everybody has the brain capacity to understand the byron buxton joke element of it all but um you know victory laps and um you know stomping on graves of players that didn't work out season it's been premature you know it's it's, it's still at this mm -hmm. moment it's premature but we are getting close i think it, where the sample sizes day. are growing i think memorial day i think that's the perfect time because you could celebrate you know, because it's right at the end of May. You've had two months. It's a good sample. Um, you can crack open a cold one by the pool and celebrate that by that time. You know, the pool season starting to open up a little yeah. bit here in the East Coast. And then Sorry, I yeah. would say, yeah, well, it's always pool season in Arizona. In Arizona. Yeah, it really is. And then I would say on the flip side, also Memorial Day where you can roast people on the barbecue. Guys that are terrible yeah. and you just want to, you know. But we're in that middle period. We're in that middle spot yeah, where it's starting to feel, you know, it's starting to feel like, you know, these trends feel long. But also, the last thing I would add, that is why because we are in that halfway point where we can officially join into victory lap season, 
this is why that conversation from, from earlier about like Kyle Tucker trading for this is a good period for guys that have had these extent. I mean, look at uh, Cody Bellinger. People were mm. laughing, laughing themselves to sleep about how Cody Bellinger was done and he started to pick back up. But guys like Kyle Tucker haven't done that yet. So the opportunity is pretty good right now. So go and oh, jump Whitney on Earth at that midway point. Yeah, and Witt is another. I mean, I've got all the shares of Witt, so I can't trade for him. But yeah, those are a couple on. guys that you should go and do while we're in this period where people people will look, they'll see the sample size, and they'll go, boy, this is a little bit more than that first week or two. And then the real panic starts to set in, and things are going to start to turn over. So take advantage of it. Your moment of zen, everyone, from the Welsh there. Make sure you are subscribing to Fantasy Pro's MLB channel. Every time that you uh, you hear the show, you think about the show, we want you to be a subscriber of ours so you know every day when we drop our show. And also make sure you like the show as well. We love you. We love you guys. Like the show. Give us some love back. And, of course, head over to betmgm.com or download the BetMGM app, the King of Sportsbooks, and use that promo code leading off. That way you can start your prop bets as well. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Buxton! See?